Curaçao, Malta, Brazil, Denmark, Northern Ireland, and Ecuador. This is the group six of the Head to Head Challenge. Three contestants are Curacao, Malta, and Brazil. How are you this morning, ladies? Very good, Very good. thank you. How is the weather treating you? It's all right. It's cold. Inside it's okay. It's okay. Yes, uh -huh. outside it's a bit cold. Yeah. <laughs> you must be missing your home, Brazil. Yes. Yeah. Of course. It's very warm down there. Yes, right now. it is. So we're going to start now. Don't be nervous. We're going to check first Curacao. Sharon Meyer. I come from Curacao. My island is a melting pot of many cultures just like myself. I come from a mixed background and I am fluent in four languages. I'm an island girl. All my life I've loved nature and the wonderful things that our beautiful planet has to offer. I really enjoy to share precious moments with nature that has surrounded me since I was a child. Ever since I've been a little girl, I constantly see lots of sick and starving dogs on the streets of my island, and not so many doing something about the issue. I'm currently working with my campaign, Cuide Te Cuidabu, which means take care of those who take care of you. We appreciate your support for the dogs on the street. I believe that with my courage and determination, I can make my dream come true, and one day not see any more suffering animals on the streets of my island and hopefully one day in the rest of the world. Welcome Curacao. You come from a multicultural background, right? Yes. What does that mean to you? For me, multicultural means that you have a piece from different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I think that facilitates you to understand other cultures also, like it helps you, it broadens your horizons. Mm -hmm. Where I'm from, Curacao, it's a, it's a small island in the Caribbean. We're only a population of 150,000 people, but we have a concentration of, of so many influences from around the world. We have influence of South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and even, even the Middle East. So, we, and we all live together in harmony. Um, we all live together in the same neighborhoods. We don't have, you know, separate neighborhoods for each, you know, let's say, um, one in the city, or um, if you want to say it that way. Um, we celebrate each other's holidays. So we're all a union. I think that's something that my island is very unique um, for. And we also, most people speak at least four languages, including myself. Wow. And me, myself, I also come from a multicultural background. Uh, my father is Dutch, and my mom is Ecuadorian and Swiss from Switzerland. And she was born in the Galapagos Island. So I was born up, you know, with appreciating for nature, for animals. And I think it's a pretty good example <laughs> that many nationalities can work together and yes. live together, just like Miss World. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and what about your beauty with a purpose? I saw that you care very much for animals. Yes, so ever since um, I was little, I would always see my mom, I would help her with, um, like getting out of the car, we see a dog like walking on the street, we'd have you know, food in the trunk, let's go give it the dog some food. Um, but I always thought, like, let, I wanted to do something bigger for my island because I would always see, so, like, a lot of dogs on the street. But I wasn't sure, like, how to go about it or what to do. So when I won the crown of Miss um, World Curacao, I had no doubt in my mind that, that this is what I wanted to do, like, this is what I wanted to work on. Because I don't consider that my island has, let's say, big social causes, like maybe other countries. Um, and this was something my island needed or needs because I think it also affects, let's say, our tourism. Yeah, of course. So um, what I'm doing, I'm like going to radios, I'm going to TV um, shows, 
I have events, I go to schools. I focus on the youth because I believe that they are the future and mentality starts from young on. And yeah, I, I have like awareness programs is what I'm doing. Um, how to take care of your dog, how to love your dog. Because you know, they have, they have feelings too, they have a soul and they need, need someone to take care of them. And also, it's really important that the dog has good health because um, it's not good for the dog to reproduce a lot. Um, and if you don't want to have any puppies, you should not let your dog reproduce because that's how they end up there in the street because there's too many of them. Yeah, yes. I, I think it's very important to preserve the animal's dignity as exactly. well. Exactly. So do you have any tips for someone who, has, who owns pets and like some important things that they should keep in mind? Well, just keep in mind that, you know, take care of your dog um, or your pet because they have a soul and they have feelings too. And I don't think it's always nice to leave them all day at home, you know, locked up. Or like in my island, um, it's known that we have them outside. You know, don't have them in the sun all day because it's hot. And like, no, of course. keep them in the shade. Um, also, like I said mm -hmm. before, like if you don't want to have it, keep your dog healthy, keep your pet healthy. If you don't want them to reproduce, mm -hmm. get them castrated. Like, um, so that's what also what I'm doing with my campaign. I, um, I have castration programs. I'm, we're bringing, mm -hmm. together with another big organization, um, we have programs of mass castrations. We bring doctors from abroad. You're, and you're doing lots of things yes, for yourself. Yes. So thank you very yes. much for explaining your, your yes. program. And in general, I think that we as the world, we should um, take care of our animals, take care of our nature, because um, there's a lot of animal suffering and even going extinct. And mostly it's because of us humans. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, sure. deforestation, don't worry, but plastics. You, you will have another round well, to explain yes. <laughs> more in depth, so don't worry okay. about it. But thank you for giving You're us welcome. this little, little tip of it. Thank you. Now we're going to get to meet Malta. Born and raised in the beautiful island of Malta, my name is Nicole Vella, and I am your Miss World Malta 2019. Whenever I'm not singing, dancing, or playing the piano, I am busy studying at university, where I am currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in psychology. After completing this, I aspire to pursue a master's degree in music therapy, and then travel the world. Mental health is a subject that is very dear to me, as I believe that people must give importance to their mental health as much as they do their physical health. I feel honored to have been given this opportunity as Miss World Malta because it provides an enriching experience by finding the beauty within others, but also within yourself. My name is Nicole Vella and it is with great pride that I represent the Maltese Islands at this year's Miss World Contest in London, England. Malta, we can see that you're very, very gifted in the arts department. Well, uh, yes, um, my family has always had a very big love for music. My mother is a singer, my father has a great passion for music, and my, my uncle is a performer. We're always um, uh, around the house, there's always music going, and we're always either singing mm -hmm. or doing something. Um, my family has always encouraged me to pursue uh, my passion for the arts, and I have I have started to take um, ballet classes as well. I've been dancing since I was three years old, um, piano lessons and singing lessons. Um, I have a, I've had many memorable experiences in all of the areas, um, most especially in uh, the singing field. I've taken part in the Junior Eurovision in my country oh, wow. when I was a little girl. It was a very, very fun experience. When I got off the stage, I was like, oh, I want to do it again next year. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and last year, I took part in the first season of X Factor Malta. It was a wonderful experience. You're used to the stage now. Oh, yes. <laughs> you will feel perfectly comfortable when the Miss World final comes. Oh, yes. I feel at home on, on the stage. I just feel so comfortable. It's it's, a, it's very much it's, home it's your for home. me, yes. Um, and, what, and what about you, Beautiful with a Purpose? Sorry to interrupt. It's okay. I'm actually working on something completely different on my Beauty with a Purpose project. It's about human trafficking. Mm -hmm. I'm working with the Parliament Secretary, um, Honorable Giulia Farrugia Portelli, um, and we're trying to raise awareness on human trafficking, and we created this campaign called Human Like You mm -hmm. to show that human trafficking is something that happens very frequently, and 
it doesn't just happen with adults, but with children as well. Um, there's various areas that they go into, like prostitution, um, child labor, the workers not being paid a lot. They just yeah. take their passport and they just work. And being a psychology student, I really want to raise awareness on this because these workers, um, their mental health gets affected as well. Going through these experiences, it takes such a toll on the, on the person. And uh, I believe that we should all come together and raise awareness on such an important subject. Yeah, and sometimes we just don't know that it, it is there. Like We know it, yes. is, it exists, but we don't see it, we don't listen about it, we, we don't know yes. if someone's into it. Yes, we need to, we need to spot to the spot signs. That, that's what actually put some, what we're doing as part of my campaign. That's great. Thank, Thank you, Malta. Last but not least, Brazil. I spent my childhood playing with my mother's lipsticks, parades in front of the mirror and taking some photos for fun. I dreamed of being a model, but my parents had no money to invest in professional courses. I came from a humble family, and even with the difficulties, I have always been determined, ambitious, dream and independent. My first job was a volunteer in a company that helped elderly, and since that I fell in love with social works. And I've been doing that for about 80 years. I fulfilled the dream of becoming a model and work as a digital influencer. I participated in seven beauty pageants, and right now I have the honor of representing Brazil in the largest one in the world. My beloved country, Brazil, is full of culture, tourist spots, exotic animals, beautiful beaches and cuisine, known for its smiling diversity and full of loved people. I carry important values such as humility, gratitude, respect and compassion, and I am motivated by my fight in God. Today, I use the visibility of my Titli to fulfill my missionary purpose here on the earth. My name is Elise Miele, I'm 20 years old and I represent in Brazil in Miss Road 2019. See you in London! So Brazil, I really like the story of you using your lipstick, oh, your mom's <laughs> lip lipstick. I think. I think we all did it at one point. <laughs> what about your video with a purpose? Um, back in January, I decided to cut my hair short to donate and help women with cancer. Uh, I posted on my social networks and in just a few weeks, more than 80 women decided to do the same. And all these women cut their hair to donation too. In September, when I was called Miss Brazil, I discovered that Marina Fontes, one of my Miss Brazil directors, had uh, breast cancer. Uh, yes. So we decided to unite our forces and spread the beautiful purpose around Brazil with the government, the health, the hospitals, uh, important doctors in Brazil, the press. We talk with the women about it and important uh, and w important, yeah. Okay. Uh, and with the women, the living pool areas about it. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, the beautiful purpose, it's not about just make wigs and donation these wigs, but it's about awareness, it's about information, it's about fight for a better health uh, in Brazil. Yeah, I, I love that while you were saying that the song came, came out. Yes. <laughs> uh, cancer is such a difficult disease as, uh, as a patient and as a family. But I think what you're doing is is beautiful. Thank you, Vanessa. So thank you for spreading awareness thank on that. You. Thank you, Brazil. Thank you. And those were your first three candidates. How are you feeling, girls? Very excited. More relaxed. About it. Relaxed. Yeah, more Happy. relaxed. <laughs> well, now you can vote for your favorites in all the social media platforms, Mobster, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, the Miss World website, MissWorld.com. Our next three contestants are Denmark, Northern Ireland, and Ecuador. How are you feeling, ladies? Great, yeah. The wait is over. Yes. 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 Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so let's start with Denmark. To be happy and grateful in life is my biggest ambition, and I would love to help others to achieve this goal. 
My name is Natasha Kunde. I'm 18 years old and I'm going to represent my lovely country, Denmark, for this year's Miss World 2019. I was born and raised in a little delightful suburb to Copenhagen, and when I was only four years old, I developed a life-changing passion for ballet. I auditioned for the Royal Danish Ballet School, where I danced my heart out for seven years, and today I teach ballet. On a daily basis, I'm studying math and economics. My future ambition is to start up my own company and spend the profit on charity work for especially children with cancer and their affected families. Because I'm very passionate about making the world a better place. I will always meet the world with a smile, a positive perspective and an open mind. Therefore, I'm very excited to meet the other contestants and the members of the Miss World organization. Well, Denmark, I was amazed by the movement that you were doing on your video. And I want to know, what is the best thing about being a ballet dancer? The greatest thing about being a ballet dancer is how I can use my body to express myself and tell a story to other people because ballet is very similar to acting but you have to find new ways to use your movements to tell this story and create a special feeling or a special atmosphere for the people who are watching you perform and other from that I teach ballet. I really love to oh. teach ballet. <laughs> I teach um, two years old and up and also adults who are older than me. And the greatest thing about teaching is the feeling of giving something to other people because I can see the excitement in their eyes when the children are learning new things and when they can see their own progress and how they can achieve their own goals. And I really love that feeling. Yeah, so yeah. What, what do you teach to the younger kids? Because I've always wanted to go to a class, a ballet class, and so I just wonder, what, what do you teach the very young ones? Yeah, I can teach you something, actually, oh, please, if you want so. to. Um, because in ballet we don't talk at all, as I said, but we are still storytellers. So I can teach you how to say, I love you, mm -hmm. in ballet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we have to do, first of all, we have to suck this stomach in. We have to think that we have a diamond right here and pop that out to the okay. whole world. Then we have to smile because we have to think that we're wearing those point shoes and it's very painful, but we have to <laughs> smile anyway. Okay. <laughs> and shoulders down. And then we take our arms and we say I, point I, at ourselves. Okay. Then we take it over to the left side where the heart is, mm -hmm. say love. And then you point at that special person and you say you. So we. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. That's lovely. Yes. I think that's very, very lovely, Denmark. Thank you so and much. Now, besides that, can we talk about your Beauty with a Purpose? Yes, of course. My Beauty with a Purpose project is a collaboration mm -hmm. with the, the Organization of Cancer Affected Children. Mm -hmm. And we want to help these families who are affected by cancer because when a child is diagnosed with cancer, the whole family will be affected and they will live in a very lonely atmosphere because of those demanding treatments in the hospitals and maybe some of the children have to drop out of school to mm -hmm. stay home and the whole family has to keep an eye on their weak immune systems. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore the organization and I, we want to arrange activities for these families, for example, ski trips or family weekends so they can be together with other people who understand them and they don't have to explain the situation or mm -hmm. be lonely anymore. They can just be themselves with their great personalities and all their qualities. Thank you, Denmark. And now we move on to Northern Ireland. Hello, my name is Lauren Leckie and I'm 21 years old and I live in the beautiful countryside of Northern Ireland. I live with my mum, dad, my older sister and my three younger brothers and I'm so excited to be representing Northern Ireland on the Miss World stage. Since winning Miss Northern Ireland in May, I have continued to work in the family business, Stonyford Concrete. We are a concrete manufacturer and supplier throughout the whole of UK and Ireland. I deal with all aspects of the business, 
including sales, accounting and customer relations. It is a very male dominated environment but I am never one to go with the flow and enjoy the challenge of accomplishing anything that I put my mind to. When I'm not wearing my steel toe cap boots and high vis jacket, I spend a lot of time baking and decorating cakes and selling them to local businesses with all proceeds going to Northern Ireland Children's Hospice. I am thrilled to be representing Northern Ireland so close to home on the London stage and I look forward to meeting all the lovely ladies and I will see you all soon. Well Northern Ireland that was a very beautiful cake. Thank you. So I've always loved baking and especially decorating so mm -hmm. My granny was always making soda bread and my mum was always making amazing apple tarts and from then I just loved it and at 15 I made my first wedding cake. Yeah. So, oh wow. And then I went on to study patisserie and confectionery just because it was something I was so interested in and although I work full time in construction and um, at the weekends or at free time I'm always baking and decorating for fun. Because it's uh, it's art. It's not just I making a cake. Yeah. Like all those little details. Lots of painting and airbrushing and piping. Yeah, that was it's, like a box, right? Yeah, so that's pastillage. So that's a really hard box that actually will go nearly rock hard and you can take the lid off it as well. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's a lid that comes it's off. It's functional as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I thought you beat it with a purpose. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So on from the baking, I had wanted to do something that I love doing and I thought that I would bake cakes. So I'm an ambassador for the Northern Ireland Children's Hospice and they provide palliative care and support for babies, young people and adults. So I reached out to lots of local businesses and asked if they would be interested in a cake. Uh, it's a rich fruit cake with the hospice logo as well as their own company logo and the support was amazing. I emailed lots of people and the emails all came flooding back so that means the cakes all started so I've been baking cakes for a long time now and I actually had seven cakes to do the night <laughs> before I got here to make sure they were all done since I'll be away so I really enjoy it and it's all for a great cause too. So I, I, I need you to make my next birthday cake or, yes. cake or whatever <laughs> happens first and uh, I think you're really expressing your art, your very unique type of art and putting to work in service for others. And yes. It's beautiful. Thank so you. thank you Northern Ireland for thank that. You. Now it's time for Ecuador. Soy María Auxiliadora Hidrobo y el 27 de abril viví el día más especial de mi vida al convertirme en Miss World Ecuador 2019. Me emociona más aún saber que estaré en un escenario que visualicé desde pequeña. Miss World siempre fue una de mis metas, porque yo sé que cuando tienes una mano amiga lista para ayudarte, puedes cumplir muchos sueños. Y eso es Miss World para el mundo. Es esperanza de que podemos cambiar vidas. Me he preparado arduamente para llevar con orgullo mi bandera. Mis cursos de idiomas han sido los más intensos. Me gusta leer, bailar, hacer ejercicio y eso me ha ayudado a tener mayor rendimiento físico y por supuesto disciplina. Para mí compartir con mi familia es lo más importante de mi vida. Mi mamá y mi hermano han sido fundamentales para que a mis 17 años haya conseguido vivir este sueño. Es impresionante que todo ha pasado en un año, porque cumpliré mi mayoría de edad antes de viajar a Europa para representar a Ecuador. Sé que muchas jóvenes me siguen y me ven como un ejemplo por ganar el título. Por eso trabajo a conciencia, para que ese ejemplo que siguen sea de superación, de responsabilidad y de compromiso con mi país. Acompáñenme a vivir la mayor aventura de mi vida. Los llevaré en mi corazón y juntos alzaremos con orgullo la bandera de Ecuador. Ecuador will answer in Spanish. Uh, we see in your video that you have lots of dreams. Can you tell us what are your biggest ambitions? Bueno, tengo muchos sueños, pero creo que los más importantes eh, te diré dos. Mm -hmm. Uno es que Dios utilice mi vida para llegar a muchas personas mediante su palabra, poder eh, dar mi testimonio de lo grande y maravilloso que Dios ha orado en mi vida. Y asimismo quiero ser actriz, quisiera estar en cualquier parte del mundo y ver que personas están viendo una producción mía, ya sea novela o cine. Eh, eso me emocionaría mucho, eso me encanta. 
te ves como en un tráiler de película y yendo a ver tus propias películas al cine. <ríe> Así es, ver que la gente también se emociona de ver una obra mía, de sentir eso tan lindo de que una obra, algo que tanto quiero. Oh, qué maravilloso. ¿Y tu proyecto de belleza con propósito? ¿De qué se trata? Bueno, para mí la educación es algo muy importante para eliminar todo lo malo que hay en el mundo. Y en la Amazonía del Ecuador muchos niños estaban dejando de estudiar por no tener un medio de movilización. Es por eso que junto a la organización en Ecuador decidimos e emprender con la campaña Dona tu Bici. Hasta ahora he donado 450 bicicletas que eh, a ellos se les acorta el tiempo de llegada en el 50% y antes tenían que caminar de dos a tres horas para llegar a sus escuelas y ahora no, ahora ya llegan más eh, temprano a sus escuelas, a sus hogares. Así pueden comer a la hora correcta y jugar, ser niños. Oh, creo que les vas a cambiar la vida el simple hecho de que puedan tener una educación y, y, y tener un futuro distinto, ¿no? Así es. Pero muchas gracias, Ecuador. Gracias a ti, Vanessa. And that was your group six. Congratulations.